Hi everybody and welcome. Over the last week or so I have made uh, four images which I'm pretty chuffed with actually. Uh, they were all uh, taken in the uh, forest and of uh, trees which is always a, a difficult thing to sort of uh, take I find trying to get um, some sort of order out of the chaos. But I'm going to run through with you uh, the editing process and thought process I used for this one, number one image, and this one, number two image. Now, if you want to jump from one to another, I'll leave in the description below on the timeline you can jump to it if you don't want to watch both of them. But I did create this one. and this one. Uh, I can't unfortunately show you the process with these because they were quite complicated and uh, I can't remember the exact settings I used so can't do that one sorry about that. Now they're all done in um, iColorama if you follow me you'll know that I do use this uh, editing software for my images um, and I've had some lovely comments from you guys just lately saying how much you enjoy watching the process and the thought process uh, behind uh, my images. So yeah, huge thank you for that. It's always um, much appreciated and it just makes, you know, these videos worthwhile making. It does for me anyway. So let's get stuck straight into the first one. This is the first image we're going to play with. Now I must say that this actually took me a fair time. I suppose I was playing with it for about four hours and I was very near the point of just abandoning it um, because it wasn't really going the way I wanted it to. Uh, but I did end up with an image that I was very pleased with. So I'm going to take you through the process uh, that I used and the sort of uh, thoughts I had along the way. But this is the thing with iColorama. You've just got to play around with the settings um, to see the effect they have on the image and to see if it does produce a result that, that you're happy with. So the first thing we did with this uh, was go into uh, the colour change for it. So I went to Sign and we picked uh, number 56. And I was actually, at the time, I was sort of quite pleased with those colours. It wasn't really producing the image I wanted, but it was a good starting point. So we applied that setting. And then I really went into um, extreme and went to um, form and sort and this setting is very very extreme and I picked uh, the preset number one and I dialed in the displace to a hundred percent and you can see the effect it has on the image uh, it's very very abstract it works on some images and some it doesn't but I thought I'd run with it and see where it takes me so we applied that setting it just it wasn't really doing it for me so again I thought I would try colors so I went into sepia and ended up picking preset number 30 which is that one what I thought I would try after applying that setting is to blend the original image with it to see what it did so we opened up the original image and I went down the uh, presets for the overlays until I found that um, pin light seemed to suit it probably the best. It brought out some of the detail back into the image. So if I, that's before and that's after. So as you can see, before and after. It brought some detail back into it. So again, I applied that setting. I then 
went into black and white to see what I could produce in there and ended up choosing preset number 61. Now, this really is getting to an image that I like, uh, very abstract, but there was just something about it that, that sort of jumped out at me that uh, I thought I could run with it and uh, see where it took me. But I ch t played with the opacity and I ended up turning the opacity down to um, 60%, which brought out some of those colours very faintly, but I thought that was very pastely and very nice. So I actually um, saved that setting and opened it up in Capture Annex 2 just to play around with it to see if I could improve on it. So we'll go into Capture Annex 2 now and I'll show you the uh, settings I used to um, get the final image. The first thing I did in uh, Capture NX2, which I do to a lot of my images, is just sharpen them a little bit in the high pass filter. So just click that on. You'll see it, it's just, as it says on the tin, it just sharpens the image up a little bit. The next thing I did was a little bit of contrast, um, actually 50% on that, which gave me that which I thought improved the image. And the last thing I did was 20% uh, in the colour booster. Didn't really make a great deal of difference, but just a tad. So yeah, that was the final image, which I was really, really pleased with. For an image that was nearly put in the bin, I was very happy with the end result. So this is the raw file we're going to be um, editing. Now, I wasn't really, I did play around with this for quite a while, and I wasn't really too sure why I didn't like it or why it wasn't working. And I decided that there was too much space between the tree on the right and the centre tree. Uh, this is a little trick you can do in iColorama, and I'm, I'm sure you can do it in Photoshop and Lightroom as well. But and not using that software, I couldn't really comment for definite. So we're going to we're going to close that image up and we're going to open up a square blank canvas. And we're then going to blend the original image into that canvas. And we're then going to just tap on this little icon in the bottom right hand corner called fill and it will fill unclick the fill and then re-click it. You can see it is compressed the image. The only downside of this is it does make everything taller as well. Now trees you can get away with but obviously if you're doing it with, for sort of people or buildings or something like that it probably wouldn't work it, it just wouldn't work but with trees it, it does. So I was quite happy with that or certainly more happy with that. So we applied that setting and then I was going to play around with the uh, colours. So we went into sign and pick number 34, which I was really, really pleased with the effect that that had given me, that setting had given me. And I was really going to run with this one. So we applied again that setting. Now, one of the settings here in effects is called glow. And this sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. If the image is quite light at the beginning, it seems to work better than if you're doing it to a dark image. But I thought it was a little bit extreme. So I dialed the uh, opacity down to uh, 25%, which I liked. So we applied that setting. Wasn't really too sure about it being in black and white. I thought it did work, but I thought we'd see if a, a pastel colour suited it better. And I ended up picking number 22, which I really, really liked. So much so that that was actually it 
for this image in iColorama. Now, although it's only taken me a, a minute or so to show you, it probably took me a couple of hours of playing around with it until I got it to where I was happy with. So we're now going to open this up in Capture NX2 and just do a few tweaks to it. Now there was very little I did to this image, to be honest, to improve upon it. I did uh, sharpen it a little bit as I did in my last image, which just sort of made it pop a bit more. And I gave it just the tiniest bit of contrast, um, just to sort of bring out the dark colours in it. But that was it. Uh, it's one of those images that um, really sort of worked in quite a short time of playing with. Some images I'll play around with for a day and end up just putting them in the bin. And other images, they just seem to work straight off the bat. And very often they're the images that uh, are the best or the ones that I like most. And uh, this is a point in case. So yeah, that's, that's it. I hope you found this helpful or inspirational uh, to sort of play around with your images in iColorama. If you have, please leave a like below or a comment. Uh, it always helps to boost my site a little bit. Uh, which I need all the help I can get <laughs> because I've been doing this um, for a couple of years now and um, yeah it's very very hard doing YouTube videos and getting them out there but anyway as I say I hope you've enjoyed it until the uh, next one I do for you this is John Dexter saying thanks very much bye for now